Here we go. Hello, we are live on Sing Space um, with Christy Valeriano. For some reason, your name has disappeared. Um, it? Yeah, let me let me. Um, I'm going to add it to the banner now as we as we wait for people to come and join us. So let me just do a little edit on our banner. Oh, that pops up when I when I take the banner off. So let me write your name here. Um, coach Christy. You all know her name if you're one of our gang. This is a regular at Sing Space, which we all know already. Um, so I don't need to I don't need to tell people how brilliant you are because everybody already knows. But if you don't know, <laughs> see, let's just give a couple of minutes for people to find us. Although I know it's the middle of the day and this was a bit impromptu, so if you are on catch up, um, I'm just gonna share this. If we've gone live on Sing Space, here we are. I'm just going to try and find it this time so we can pop it over. Um, so while I do this, let me see if I can multitask. Um, Chris, do you just want to say hello and what's going to happen in the live today, and then we'll kick off. Um, do a little bit of technical faffing around. Yes. Yes, I'm. Uh, you're cutting out a little bit, Rachel. So I'm not sure if it's you or me, but I'm going to keep talking, okay? And if you can't hear me, just let me know. Um. So today we really just wanted to give some context for what the the eight week belting course is going to look like, right? Um. I think belting is such a huge thing, and it's always coming back. Um. In the Facebook group, in the chat, and the questions tend to cluster. In, um, in similarities, right? So, so you know the more input you have from people that, that folks are experiencing this trajectory in a similar way. Um, and so today is really just about outlining how this eight weeks is gonna serve um, those, those people, those people who are having their journey with Belt, no matter where they are in their journey. Yeah, I think we're all there. I don't think there's anyone out there who is like, well, maybe, maybe if you are, I'm just going to give you a round of applause right now and say, I wish I was you, that person who said, I've never had a problem with belt and I find no challenges with belt. Um, I mean, brilliant if that is you. But before we start, why don't we just ask, because I know there, there are people here and hello if you're here. Hi, um, hi, Ellen. Hi, Jodie. Hi, Janet. Hello, everybody. Um, do, put in the, do put in the comments if you have a big question or mm. an A or challenge you know with this um and i think it's time to kick off so hello everybody we are here with christy valeriano one hey. of our regular coaches at sing space to announce that we are going to be launching a very exciting course a very demanded course at the moment um which is going to be eight weeks um to better belting and we're going to talk about what that so christy can i just start off with before we I, I'd love to hear about your experience. The first question I want to ask you is, what are the kind of questions and challenges you see most around belting in your own studio? That's a good one. Um, I do quite a lot of teaching with belting, both online and in studio. And, and as I said, the, things tend to cluster in similarities. So folks tend to experience belting in um, a similar way. And oftentimes you get the ones who are experimenting with it and they've gotten to a place where they're making a sound that they would associate with belting and it feels amazing, but then they're like, is this right? Is this what it is, right? So you have some people who really struggle to find it, but then other people who have really found it but they need a little bit of context before they can trust it because it's a really scary sound to take out in a situation where you're going to be judged and evaluated. And so you could do it beautifully in your bedroom, but then when you take it to an audition or even to a karaoke party, it becomes a really scary thing. So as much as giving people um, as much as helping people find it and make it safe, we're also giving them the context to trust it so that they can feel proud taking it out into an audition or into a masterclass and saying, yes, 
I know this is belt. This is the sound that we're going for stylistically, and I can do it safely without hurting myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. So the first thing that people, you find people are craving is that feedback from someone saying, it's okay what you're doing. Um, yeah. Or if it's not yet, this is what you can do to get to the place where you can comfortably own that sound. And I think that the question that people will be asking is, um, in the spectrum, so if you're new to belting, then maybe the first thing is just about finding that, finding that, what is belting? Well, what is belting is the big question. Um, and if you if you are further along, it's finding out how all the different genres or places in your range that you might find there is demand for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you find that when you work with people at different stages of the journey, new to belting or further along, that there are different challenges or do you think it's the same kind of challenge in different, just with a few little tweaks? You know, I almost see it as, as layers, right? So, and one of the things that I think would be so great at this course is having people who are at different stages in their journey because they are giving context to the others, right? So, so it's almost like concentric circles. You're always finding your belt. It's like, I think of it in three concentric circles. You're always finding it and making it safe. Then you see how long can I do it? How high, how low can I do it, right? And then that third, that third circle is really about how much control can I have over it? Can I link it into my mix and get into that belt note and have it feel seamless? What's the difference? Uh, can I do it in rock? How does it differ in rock how, from, you know, there's no business like show business. What do I have to do with my body to create those variations? And it's not like I don't see that as a as a hill or as a trajectory. It's really almost those three things are happening simultaneously, but you're deepening your confidence in all three of them as you go. Um, and also having people who are a little deeper, a little farther along in the journey. I don't like to say farther along in the journey because I almost think of it as getting deeper into it. So it becomes it becomes more instinctive um, unless it's, it's not it doesn't feel like it's a different place on the pathway to me. It just feels like it's a little bit deeper and more instinctive in you. So if there are folks who've been doing it longer who are a little bit more deeper, deeply integrated into what belting is, having those people side by side with people who are just finding their happy shout and learning the difference between a happy shout and a scratchy shout is actually what makes this course brilliant and will will you know will really help create that accountability and community feel that we want to get from it yeah and i think there's there's one of the questions that we get asked the most, um, lots of questions popping into my head right now. The first one is people say um, they're craving. I love that. Your, your builders are belting. I, I know. <laughs> your builders are belting. I feel like belting back at the builders right now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I'm alive. Um, the consistency. So I found this right. So right in the in the like height of my career when I was performing, you know, in the in the West End and in front of a lot of people, it was this kind of moment before the belt. Yeah. Like, a specific show where there was there was specifically a need, and it was like I would just think I would try praying to any anyone that I could think of. You know, I just every day I thought going to happen. And, and I think that what people are looking for is this is, yeah, this is the time where they're really going for it too. It's like it's, it is, isn't it? Let's just put the house down during this 30 minutes of our lives. It's really yeah, I've heard the word belt and then like yes. <laughs> like, um consistency, how do you um, I try to practice and I think that's really mm -hmm. hours and hours and hours praying and practicing. Always yeah. To the place you want, so I think what, what I, love um, I think that's what a lot of this course is about. Is is
that. Yes. I may, if they keep on, I might just ask them to stop for a moment. Oh, oh maybe. Uh, there we go. <laughs> All good. <laughs> consistency. So how do people achieve that? Is it in the Holy Grail consistency? Yes. Um, or is it the belting is just that vulnerable thing in it and that part of the danger and the beauty of it is that maybe it might happen and maybe it might not. I'm hoping that's not the answer. So I think what we're... Well, honestly, you know, it's funny because I really believe that through productive practice, you get predictability. That sounds a little bit like a sound bite, right? But the idea is to craft predictability because smart singers don't go out on stage with no idea about the result that they're going to get, right? And smart coaches don't, um, don't want that for their singers either, right? Because you have to have a good bit of predictability before you can experience that push where you just go, ooh, I'm on stage. I've done this show for six months and I'm ready to push a little farther. Can I go up to the higher note? Can I get a little, you know, more anchoring and rock into my belt? That's the kind of, of um, a freedom and vulnerability you want to experience, but that has an undergirding of predictable, mundane um, kind of understanding the result before you make it kind of practice that really gives you that freedom to be on stage and create magic, right? And so a lot of what I want to do in this is, is there's going to be a lot of warming up, a lot of individualized coachings, but I also want to leave people with um, exercises, kinesthetic, kinesthetically developing exercises that they can do anywhere to strengthen the belt and help them understand what their output is going to be before they make the sound. So I think this ties a lot into um, sports psychology and sports um, therapy and sports training where you're really looking at the efficiency of what you're doing and then you see how you can replicate it in on different pitches, on different vowels, but you still know what you're going, going through. We also focus a lot on individualized feedback. So I, I, the, one of the reasons why the individual component of this course is so important is because you just want to have someone tell you, okay, well, explain your experience. When it's right to you, explain it. Because when you can feel it, not yourself, not in front of your vocal coach, then you can do it anywhere, right? You can take it out of the room. So my passion is really giving people exercises and feedback that they can take outside of the class to make them more confident about the outcome. Because when you know what's going to come out of your mouth, you're not scared anymore or you're scared less. Do you know what I mean? So it's we put the work in during the course with what you've called, I think, your little and often exercises, things that we can really show up like we do in the vocal gym and we can do them. So you've put the foundations there in breath work, in body work, you know, in in, in kind of in in um, in muscle work. Um, and so that then when you get on stage, we can commit to letting go emotion music all of the other things that are there to make the magic absolutely absolutely yes so can you tell us um a bit about the structure of the course and how what, what we get what are we how are we going to be executing this uh once we well, yeah. we <laughs> I can see what's in my mind and i know we're, we're still in discussion about some of the little nitty gritties but um overarchingly it's gonna be um, sort of a 30 minute vocal gym and then another hour right afterwards, which will be um, giving feedback on the little and often exercises and also coaching. So there's a lot of um, opportunity for people to get consistent coaching and also to get a consistent practice um, schedule. So ideally, you know, I'd love to, to have people just really commit to the eight weeks and do the little and often, even if it even if on some weeks it's hectic and you're doing them less than you would so that you can, so you can reward yourself with that um, consistency that comes to the end. 
In terms of how the course is structured, we're really going to structure it in, in those three concentric circles that I was talking about. So first couple of weeks are just going to be about finding it and, and developing a set of metrics for how you know it's safe. Um, and then a, a sidebar to that is sort of the emotional component. So most people can feel like their belt is physically safe, but some people don't really like the sound. So acknowledging that and developing some, some coping skills for understanding when emotionally you may need to push the boat out a little bit to make a sound that is um, physiologically and acoustically um, efficient. So that's the first part of the course. And then we're going to talk about, so really when we belt, it's um, how do I find it? Then can I go higher for longer? And then can I change it up? Can I make it softer? Can I do a rock belt? What's the difference between golden age and contemporary music theater and rock and pop? What do we do? Um, and what do we do with our vocal structures to get that difference? Because when you know that you need to move your tongue back a little bit and down a little bit to get that lovely dark belt, you can do that anywhere, right? And, and not really controlled. Um, so I think that's the main thing. And then we'd like to develop some consistency. We'd love for folks to pick two songs that they, that they um, record every week, just 16 bars, so that they have a record of themselves getting more stable. Um, and then also we'd love to sort of create some cross community. The, the more sing spacers are actually encouraging each other um, and keeping each other accountable, the, the more of that community network you feel like you have. Because in my research in belting, that is the most important because you see people and I see people in the studio every day who will make an absolutely astounding sound when they're with me. But I think to myself, you're never going to do that when I'm not breathing down your neck because you don't like the sound. But having another person who's on the journey with you who's saying, no, that is the right sound. I hear that all the time in the West End. Keep going. Keep going. Um, I think it's really integral to creating the success. Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds amazing. And I'm going to, I'm, uh, the, I just want to point out that one question I'm going to ask at the end of this session, but I'm going to do it in a minute is actually saying, um, what is belting if we're not allowed to use the word, word belting? I'm just going to bring that up in, in a couple of minutes, but I just want to clarify for anyone who's not a um, thing that when Christy says that we're starting off with a half hour vocal gym, we're essentially saying it's a 90 minute session that's going to happen once a week for eight weeks. But the first part of it is what is often what we know as members as the vocal gym. So the first part is going to be um, getting you into the place where you're going to be most optimized to learn and to sing. So you're going to be using some techniques from that are kind of everything from kind of yoga based to, to singing based to ready the mind to open up that kind of creative energy and that instinctive playfulness and that feeling of safety and that feeling of presence and being grounded so that when you move into the work on songs and the one to one feedback, which will be happening in the, the subsequent hour, people will be ready and optimized. Um, we wanted to do the song to carry you through so that you can see the real changes. And also these cohort groups are a really new thing for us. It's really exciting that we can put you into groups um, so that you can support each other through the, through the eight weeks so that you can really, as you say, you can really have that community feedback and accountability. Um, so we're really, really excited about this. I do just want to ask that question. I think there are some people who are just saying, all right, I can think of those people. I know you. I know you're out there because you said it to me already in the comments. Um, I'm not going to name drop. Okay, so we take the word belt out. What are we really talking about? Are we, we're we not just talking high notes. There's something much more to this. We're talking, when we say belt, we're talking about attaining that depth of sound and that rootedness in our commonly acknowledged speech tone higher than as high as we can to get that that powerful like emotive um that can feel dangerous i mean i'm struggling to kind of capture this here but i'd say we're not allowed to use the word belt you know i always um i like to think about it the way 
it developed. So now we teach it in studios, right? But it wasn't really until the 80s, not really until the 90s that it became a valid form of singing. It was just for such a long time, it was done. It was done really well, but it was just kind of that thing that the dancers did, right? So when you think about, and, and, and it really sort of took off in the 20s and 30s, and that was before stages had a lot of ampli amplification. So you had the dancers who also were being paid to sing. They were using their bodies quite a bit, so they were quite in their bodies doing physical movement, and they had to smile to you know, put on a compelling performance. So you get all of the things that now we reverse engineer in the studio, but essentially it started from a happy shout. That is what it started as. And now we say, oh, here, okay, you're going to anchor with latissimus dorsi to a seven, and I want you to retract, and we do all of this stuff. But actually, in the 20s and 30s, it was just somebody on a stage trying to be heard and also performing. And it wasn't until, you know, 40, 50 years passed, and we realized these singers could sustain this for 20, 30, 40 years. Think of the career that Ethel Merman had, for example, that that the, vo the voice scientists started to say, hold on a minute, why are we making this less legitimate? Why isn't this a part of now what we teach as legitimate singing? Um, and so I think when you think about saying belting without saying belting, it has to come down to that happy shout. It is really, because what makes it so compelling is that when you hear it or when you make it, it really, it really, touches you at a very deep level. Um, mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you teach a belting class and you have a bunch of people belting together, they're crying or laughing or saying things like, I never ever thought I could do that. And so whatever we do touches us at that level. Does that make sense? Yeah. And would you would you still, would you encompass the kind of gospel belt, the much higher, the much higher type of sound in within yeah. that bracket as well absolutely absolutely i mean all of that stuff is what we're going to cover we'll probably start with that happy shout which lends itself more to golden age but but when you after you find that then you go higher and and the same principles of input really work it's just that you're at a different pitch you're singing different material and so that will have a different outcome in the voice and can I ask, because I know your backgrounds, um, um, you are a, a master in the world of uh, Estill. Do you, what are you talking about there being a, a golden grail of setup for all singers? Or when we talk about belt, is this going to be an individual thing for the different singers who are attending this course? Um, that's a great question. And I think um, it is both, it is both a prescribed structure yet intrinsically individual. So um, as you know, I'm um, an Estel master trainer. And so it doesn't, the Estel model does inform my coaching, whether I'm teaching an Estel class or not. And I think inherent within the Estel model, you have this idea of the attractor state. And the attractor state is whatever an individual brings to the table. So your biomechanical uh, setup, how big your larynx is, your native accent, your, how, you know, uh, how extroverted you are. Um, all of those things bring something completely unique and completely individual. And so while we know there are principles of belting, so we know that in order to get the sound wave um, that we're looking for, the vocal folds stay closed longer. We know that. And so we do different things with airflow in order to make sure that those vocal folds aren't blown open and you don't scratch, right? We know that the larynx is, is doing some pretty crazy things when you're belting, we know that. And so we use you know, anchoring and we use muscular engagement in different ways to make sure that you get a supported, stable, safe sound. But 
what those are and how they vary is going to be completely different from person to person. So one person may like to blow huge amounts of air at their belt and one might get a little bit stuck. And so, again, that's why the individual coaching is so important because you're coaching, uh, you know, as Kitty Verdolini Abbott says, you're coaching desired biometrics from everyone. But what you say to each person could be completely different because you're, they're bringing something unique to the table. And that's what makes it fun as well. <laughs> And, and, and as I always say, and how you're perceiving it personally, even if you're doing a very similar thing to your friend in your belting cohort group, could be really, really, really different. Mm -hmm. um, as you say, that could be to do with, as I think Becky, you said about um, one of the comments that's come in from Becky, um, one of our Sing Space coaches, um, said it feels like softly spoken people find it odd to belt as it's not aligned with themselves. So as you say, there's, we're going to be, it's not, this is not just about physiology, is it? This course, this is, this is belting means something very, very different to every one of us. Um, I want to just flag, um, uh, um, yes, yes, you can take part um, if you can't be there live every week. You can do some. Obviously, we had to choose a time. We wanted a consistent time. So it will be running Tuesdays, 1030 till 12 um, mm -hmm. with with the, you know, your practice carrying you through and the practice plans carrying through each week and, and the cohort sessions, which could be organized in the evenings if that's better for you. But yes, you can catch up. Um, you can catch up on the sessions. Obviously, you won't get Christy's one to one feedback um, yeah yeah it, there wouldn't be individual feedback but if you had any questions or if something was not feeling great you could always message me and I could try to bring it in um, as a question or concern in the next course if we had time as well because obviously we want to make sure that you are getting um, optimal optimal input as well yes yeah, so I have I have two more questions for you. I, um, the first one is um, why did you? I, the first I'm going to ask them both at once, and you can uh, you can answer them all together. So the first question is why why did you? Because your research has been in belt and helping sopranos find their full belt. So helping as as um, as you said from um, Anna moving over to Elsa, um, helping us find our Adina Menzel inside. Um, why did you fall in love with kind of your research being um, helping people to belt? And I know you've seen the real life success with this and your research has been on this. Um, and also, um, if this comes into the answer, people have been asking about, well, how do I find um, the difference between my full belt and my mixed belt? Um, <laughs> throw those words out there because um i think that they are they're they're very interesting terminology you know it's all just words um but as you answer this maybe you could just bring up um the question about you know is everything mix or is there such things yeah. as all yeah that is has really been a lifelong quest for me just to make it to keep it very short i was an opera singer i was performing full time i was um doing gigs with regional operas in uh, Boston and ended up getting nodules uh, and had them operated on by the fabulous Stevens Itels. And it was, I mean, it was an amazing surgery. My, I had this bionic voice at the end of it. So I had a very positive experience with that. But I, as a part of the, um, as the part of the package, you had to get 12 speech therapy sessions with one of their speech therapists. And so my voice recovered quite quickly and I was doing all my opera stuff really well. And then in the last two sessions, my uh, speech therapist was like, hey, wink, wink, do you, want, do you want me to show you something cool? And I was like, yes, I do. And she taught me how to belt. Well, 20 years later, I discovered that my speech therapist was the longtime president of Estelle International, right? So she had been developing this and, and I just remembered thinking, this is so easy. This is so easy, right? And because I was an opera singer, because I understood my body, I could get it into my body quite quickly. So I could do that big belt and I could sing, you know, do that on a D, E flat, no trouble. But everything at the time in New York, and um, I moved then and was doing both opera and music theater. And everything in New York was Jason Robert Brown. And that was not the sound that I had learned. 
it was not at all. So my sound was working for things like Shy, for things like Petra in A Little Night Music, but I couldn't sing the last five years. It was like something totally different. And my voice would only produce something that sounded a little bit more like Kristen Chenoweth in Wicked, because those were the, the frameworks that I had at the time. But yet the deeper mix, the, you know, Aida's and the Jason Robert Browns and basically everything that was coming out during that time. Um, <laughs> oh, the builders. Um, everything during that time had something else and I didn't understand it. And it wasn't until um, I came back to teaching and then really devoted some time that I realized that, first of all, there was a different sound that I didn't understand that I needed to build into my voice. And also, I wasn't the only one with that question. I thought I was the only one. But actually, it is more common than not. Because as people are growing up, they tend to be trained still by traditional pedagogues, right, which are, which are training you in the traditional style. But yet, when you come to sing anything contemporary music theater, you're required to have a thicker mix that requires um, a thicker M1 higher in the range than what most people have been trained. So finding that happy shout and then linking into that thick mix, which is really just M1 taken a little higher in a safe way, um, is a huge part. And I would like everyone by the end of eight weeks to know what that, what both of those feel like in their body and how to link those together. Because I think it's huge. And when you can do that, it opens up 20 years worth of music for you. It's it's a really empowering feeling. Yeah, so we could so this course is suitable for people who are coming from classical and kind of let's say moving like the, from top down, but also for people who've come from maybe if you've come from a pop or a musical theater background or an acting background and you find you're going upwards and you're hitting a ceiling and you're not quite sure like what do I do here? You know, why well, I'm fine, I'm fine when I get past the B, but when you get me on that or the B flat, when you get me on that B or a C or a C sharp, you suddenly go, ah, that's what the heck? kind of challenge. So is it going to be suitable for, for both? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these, again, are, the, the one thing I just want people to know is you're not alone. If you feel that way, it's so common. It's really, really, really common. It really is. I mean, if you, it really is. It's it haunts it, it haunts so many singers, doesn't it? The word belt, all that note. <laughs> they sing. They they're happy with all the songs in their rep book, apart from that one note in in something. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't want to flip through your book and go, "I can sing that," except for the last four bars. Yeah, exactly. Sing that for the last eight bars. <laughs> so we want to resolve that in this class. Yeah, and I'd like to say I'm really happy your builders have stopped. Sorry, everyone. I know that you can hear the builders, <laughs> um, but on good news, Christy's you know moved house, and this is this is a you know congratulations. I'm going to have the most beautiful studio. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen. I, I this is this is this is uh, very exciting. I always know when something's very exciting because because I think I want I I really want to do this course. I have I have absolute. I know it's going to be brilliant. So I'm just thank you for um thank you for delivering it at Sing Space. Um, we're going to get some more information about it up on the website soon, so people will be able to register. Yes, it's included for members, but non-members can also register and do it as a self-contained course. So I think, um, Christy, is there anything else you want to say, or should we, should we tune out for, for now? Um, yeah. No, I'm just really excited and um, excited that people are excited about it because this really is my passion. And when you have, um, when you can make the sound and you know that the sound you make, you know the outcome, it's just the best feeling ever. And um, yeah, I hope we get there. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, all right. I'm going to I'm going to switch off. If you've got any more questions, pop them in the comments and Chrissy and I will come back and, and, and check in with you over the next couple of days. Um, and we will see see you in the vocal gym. All right. Thanks. Bye. Everyone. Thank you so much, Christy.